ಕ್ರೀಡಾ ಪೋತ್ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ಇನ್ ಡಬ್ಲ್ಯೂ 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 ಡಾಟ್ ದ ಪಾಪರೆ ಡಾಟ್ ಕಾಮ್ ವೆಬ್ ಅಡವಿಯ ಪೀಪಿಸಿಲ್ಲ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ಭಾಷಾವ ತೋರಾಗ ಕ್ರಿಕೆಟ್ ರಗ್ಬಿ ಪಾಪಂದು ವಾಲಿಬಾಲ್ ಮಲಲ್ ಕ್ರೀಡಾ ಪೆಸಿ ಪಂದು ಇತರ ಕ್ರಿಮಿ ವೆನಕ್ ಕ್ರೀಡಾ ಸಹ ವಿಶೇಷಾಂಗ ಲಿಪಿ ಉನ್ನತ್ ದ ಪಾಪರೆ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ತುಲಿ ಐ ಅಪೆ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಪಿಟೋ ಕ್ರೀಡಾ ಭಾ ಸಂಬಂಧ ದಾಸಕುತ್ತೆ ಕಕ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಸಮುಕ ಸಾಕಚ್ಚ ಇವಾಗೇಮ ಎಸಿಡಿಸಿ ರಗ್ಬಿ ಪಿಟಿಯ ಪಿಟಿಯ ಕತ ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಮಸಾಲಾವಾಗಿ ಸತಿಪತ ಜನಪ್ರಿಯ ವಿಶೇಷಾಂಗ ನರ್ಬನ್ ಒಬೆ ಪರಿಗಣಕೆ ಟ್ಯಾಬ್ಕೆ ಏಮತ್ತ ನಮ್ಮ ಸ್ಮಾರ್ಟ್ ಫೋನ್ ಗೆ ಲಬಾ ಗನ್ನ ಒಬಟ ಲೇಸಿನ್ ಮ ಪುಲುವ ದ ಪಾಪರೆ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ಕ್ರೀಡಾ ಪೋತ್ ಡಿಜಿಟಲಿ ಕರನೆ Buell's uh, got uh, one of the finest uh, wickets in the world and it's got uh, everything for everyone, fast bowlers, spinners and the batsmen. Uh, nowadays we tend to see that uh, the spinners coming into uh, the equation in the first session of a test match as well before lunch. Uh, how do you see this uh, trend uh, developing leading into the future? See, the thing is that in the old days, the groundsman prepared the wicket. Mm-hmm. and nobody else had a say in how the wicket was prepared even speaking for the tamil union mr kc rasaya was the ground secretary mm-hmm. he prepared the wicket and he wouldn't tolerate anyone coming and telling him what to do but today things have changed because the home side says what type of a wicket they want then someone from the board tells the groundsman and they prepare the wicket in that way so uh, when you are in that situation um, things like what you say are bound to happen because if they are strong with spinners they will make a wicket which will suit the spinners and when they are, when they have fast bowlers as they do in australia in um, um, perth you will have very fast wickets so now it has the situation has changed and wickets are made to suit the home side ಪ್ರದೇಶಿಟೆ
ಅದನ್ನು ಹಿಂದೆ ಆತ ಏನಪ್ಪ ಅಂದರೆ ಭಾರದ ಉಂಡೆ ಮತ್ತು ನಿತ್ಯ ಮತ್ತೊಂದು ಆರಂಭ ಯಾಕೆ ಉಂಡಲ್ಲ ಭಾಗತ್ತೆ ಏತ ಮುರುಳಿಧರ್ ನನಗೆ ವಿಶೇಷ ಅತಿ ವಿಶಿಷ್ಟ ಪಂದ್ಯ ಏನಿದ್ದೀರಿ ಅವನು ಸಿಲು ದಿನ ಮೈದಲ್ಲಿ ಅವನು ಬೆಸಿ ಬಿಸಿಗ ಅನ್ನೋ ದೇವಿಗೆ ಈ ಪಸ್ಸೆ ಮಗೆ ವಾಸನ ಆಗ ಮಗೆ ತನ್ನ ಮಗು ತುಂಬಿರಿ ಅವು ಕ್ರೀಡೆಗೆ ಕೆರೆದ ಮ ಈ ಥರ ಇರ್ತದೆ ಸಹಭಾಗಿ ಅದೇ ಮಗೆ ವಾಸನ ಆದ್ರೆ ಮಹಿತನ ಮಮ್ ಪಂದೂರು ಭಾರ ದಿನ ಲಕ್ನು ಹಾರಸಿ ಈಗ ಪಮನ ಕಡಲು ಪಹಕ್ಕ ಯಾಕೆ ದೇವಿ ತಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಮತ್ತು ಈಗ ತೆಗ್ತಾರ ಆಯಿತು ಬೈ ಆ ಪಂದೂರು ಪಹಾರ ದಿನ ಇಸ್ಸಲ್ಲ ಮಠ ಮಾವಣ್ಣ ಯಾಮದೇ ಹಾಕಿ ಪ್ರಕಾಶಕರ ಅವು ಮಠಕ್ಕೂ ಹೆಮದಿ ಸೇಮ ಗಾಂಡ ಬಲಂಗಿಂದ ಗಾಂಡ ಬಲಂಗಿಂದ ಪಾಲಿನ ಲಕ್ನು ಗೆಹು ಪಾಸಿ ಗುಡ ಕಿಲಾಟ ವಾಸ ಕಿಲ್ ಗೈ ಕೇಳ ಮಹಿತನ್ನ ಈ ಉಪದೇಶ ಮತ್ತು ಮಹಿತ ತುಂಗಿನ ಪಂದು ಮಹಿತನ್ನ ಮಂಗ ಲಕ್ನು ಗೆಹ ಕಲ ಭಾಗತ್ತ ಲಬಾಗಿನ ಈ ಪನ್ ಪಂದು ದುಲಹಕ್ ಪಮನ ಕ್ರೀಡಾಕರ ಮಹಿತ ದಿವಾಹಾರ ಯಾವ ಈ ದಿವಾಹಾರ ಯಾವ ಮಂಗ ಕ್ರೀಡಾಗಾರ ಇತ್ತ ಮಹಿತನ ಮಾವನ್ ಮತ ಮತಕ್ಕರ ಯಾಟ ಹೌದು ಹಯಾಗ್ಯಾಕು ಎಕ ಲಕ್ನು ಹಗ್ಗ ಬೈ ಮಮ್ಮ ಪಂದು ತುಣಕಿ ಹಿಂಗೆ ಎ ಲಕ್ನು ಗೆಹು ಹೋಗುವ ಮಹಿತನ್ನ ಎ ಸಮಗಮ ಇಟ್ಟ ಪಾಸೆ ತೇ ಪಾನೇವನ ಇಟ್ಟ ಲಕ್ನು ಪನ್ ಹಾಕ್ ಲಬ್ ಲಬಾಗತ್ತ ಇಟ್ಟ ಪಾಸೆ ಮಾಯಿ ಹಶಾನ್ ಇಟ್ಟಿ ಇನ್ ಪಾಸೆ ಹಶಾನ್ ಮಠ ಪ್ರಕಾಶಕರ ಒಬ್ಬ ಲಕ್ನು ಪನ್ ಹಾಕ್ ಲಬಾಯ ತೀನ್ ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಮೇ ಗಾಲ ಬಲನ್ ವೆದುನೋತ್ ಸಿಯತೆ ಇದೆ ಕಿರ ಮೈತನ್ನೇ ಮೈತನ್ನೇ ಅಂತಿಮ ಪನ ಮೈತಿ ಕಕ್ ವೇಗಿನ್ ಪಹಾರೋಲಿಲ್ಲ ಕರ ಬೈ ಮಗೆ ವಾಸನ ಟೈಮ್ ಪಹಾರಕ್ ಪಿತ್ತೆ ವೆದುನ ಪ್ರದೇಶ ಈ ದುಷ್ಕರ ಕಾಲೇಗೆಲ್ಲ ಪೊಡ್ಡಕ್ಕೆ ಮತಕ್ಕಲು ಸರ್ ನಮಗೆ ಅಪ್ಪ ಇದನ್ನು ಅದಟತ್ ಪಿಟ ಪಲಾತ್ವ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಬಹು ಕ್ರೀಡಕೀನ್ ಕೋಲಮಟ ಏನವ ಅವನ್ ನೋಯಕುತ್ ಗ್ಯಾಟ್ಲೋಟ್ ಮೂಣ ಪಾನ ಪ್ರಶ್ನ ಅಲ್ಟ ಮೂಣ ಪಾನ ಸಮರ ಕಲ ಒಬ್ಬಲ ಮೂಣ ಪಾಪು ತರಂ ಅಮಾರು ನೆತು ಐತಿ ಒಬೇ ಮೂಲ ಕಾಲೇದಿ ಮೂಣ ಪಾಪು ಪ್ರಶ್ನ ಗ್ಯಾಟ್ಲು ದುಃಖಂ ಕಟ್ಟು ಗೆನ ಪೊಡ್ಡಕ್ಕೆ ಕಥಾ ಕರ ಅತ್ರಮ ಅಪಟ ದಿಮುನ ಗೊಡಕ್ ಪ್ರಶ್ನ ಮಂಗತನ್ನೆ ಈ ಕಾಲೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಲಂಕಾ ಕಂಡಾಮೇ ನಾಯಕ ಯಾಕಿಯನ್ನೆ ಕ್ರಿಕೆಟ್ ತರ ಬಲಪು ನಾಯಕ ಯಾಕಿನೆ ಐತಿ ಮಂಗತನ್ನೆ ಕ್ರೀಡಕಿಯಂಗೆ ನವಾತನ್ ಪಹಸುಕಾಂ ಕ್ಯಾಮ ಭೀಮ ಮೇ ಹೆಮದ್ ಯಾಕ್ಮ ಬಲನ್ನ ಗುಣ ಏ ಏ ಕಾಲ ಹಿಟ್ ಗುಣ ಆಯಕೆ ಅಂಟ ಮಂಗತನ ವಿಶೇಷ ಏಕ ಅಪಿ ಕ್ರೀಡಕಿಯ ಹಟಿಯಟ ಪಿಟ ಬಲಾತ್ಲಿಂಗಾಪು ಮಮ ಪ್ರಮೋದ ಏರಿತ್ ಕೋಪ ಶಾಂತದ ಉಪುಲ್ ಚಾಂದನ ಮಂಗತನ ವಿಶಾಲ ಕ್ರೀಡಕಿಯ ಮುರಳೀಧರನ್ ಮೇಹಮ ಕ್ರೀಡಕಿಯ ಗತ್ತೋತ್ ಅಪಟ ಇನ್ನ ನವಾತನ್ ತಿಪಿಚ ತಂ ಕ್ರೀಡಕಿಯ ನೆವೇ ಏ ಕಾಲ ಇದು ಮಂಗತನ ನಾಯಕೆ ಅವಟ ಮೆದಿಹತ್ತೆಲ್ಲ ಅಪೇ ಪುಹುನು ಇಮ್ ಕಟಯುತು ಅಟ ಪವಾ ಎನ್ನ ಅಪಟ ವಾಹನ ಯಾಕೆ ನೆತ್ತ ಏ ಏ ಏ ಏ ಪಲಾತಿಂದಲೇ ನ ಕೌರಹರಿ ಕ್ರೀಡಕೆ ಎಕ್ಕ ಅಪಟ ಪುಹುನು ಇಮ್ ಕಟಯುತು ಅಟ ಎನ್ನ ಮಂಗ ತನ್ನ ಲಾಸ್ತಿ ಕಲ್ದಿನ ಏಕ ತಮಾ ಏ ಕಾಲೆ ಮನ್ ದಕಪು ಹೊಂದಮ್ಮ ದೇ ಮೊಕದ ಮಮ ಗಾಲ್ಕಿಸ್ ಇನ್ನ ಕಾಲೆ ಅರವಿಂದ ಅಯ್ಯ ಮಾತೆಕ್ಕೆನೋ ನೆತ್ತ ರೋಶಾನ್ ಅಯ್ಯ ಮಾತೆಕ್ಕೆನೋ ಮಮ ರಾಜಗಿರಿ ಇನ್ನೋ ನಂ ರೋಯ್ ಡಯಸ್ ಅಯ್ಯ ರೋಯ್ಯ ಮಾವರಗಣೆನೋ ಏ ವಗೆ ಚರಿತ್ ಸೇಣ ಏಕ ಮಾವರಂಗ ಹೇಳ್ತೀನೋ ಅಂತಾರ ಏ ಏ ಏ ಏ ಏ ವಗಕೀಂ ಬಾರಗನ್ನ 
Evidir last kali tu mana kaya mabih mati bala. Apa Arjuna lagi gedera nawat telat ibila kira kira untuk kaya mabih dia la tiaga na bala aga na tiye no. Welcome back to the Sukultasa Stadium where we are bringing you live and exclusive coverage of the Papare Under-20 Footballs Championship. You are joining us for the second semi-final between St. Patrick's College, Jaffna and Hamid Al Husseini College, Colombo. Two very talented teams who have claimed many a scalp on their route to the semi-final and it's going to be a thrilling semi-final and I'm joined in the box by Irshad Hasim Deen. Irshan, Irshad, your thoughts on the upcoming fixture? Well, as you rightly mentioned, both teams are dominant, have been dominant in the football scene and in the group stages as well. You can hear the roar of the crowd. Hamid Al Hussein, St. Patrick's, these are rivalries made even though the teams are from Jaffna and Colombo, the football field in the football fraternity, these are much anticipated games. There's two other big names Hamid Al Husseini, St. Patrick's, of course, defeated Zahira College on penalties in their semi final, while Hamid Al Husseini defeated Gampala Zahira College 2 1 in regulation time to seal their progression to today's big fixture and they will be vying for a place against St. Joseph's in the final in what should be a close and thrilling encounter. We will start with the college songs of both the teams. Starting first with the college song of Hamid Al Husseini.
And now for the college song of St. Patrick's College, Jaffna. So, it will be St. Patrick's College, Jaffna versus Hamid Al Hussein College, Colombo for the second semi final of the Papare Under 20 Schools Football Championship. Both teams trying to see the place in the final against St. Joseph's College. Both some stellar names among their ranks. St. Patrick's have not been shy of goal. Samson, Abishan, both with three goals to their name. Hamilton Haynes has four. And of course, their top scorer, Rajikuma Sandan, has five and is only second to start in the silver in the goal scoring list. Hamid Al Husseini have uh, Mohammed Afka among their ranks as we'll take you through the Hamid Al Husseini. Starting lineup: Aman Faiza, Muhammad Safrin, Tuan Nadir, Muhammad Rishan, Muhammad Sahan, Abdul Basit, Muhammad Zulfa, Dinesh Suren, Muhammad Hassan, Muhammad Hussein, and Muhammad Afka. They are top scorer with four goals. Yeah, having a look at uh, St. Patrick's, uh, Ramesh Dilakshana, Rajit Kuman, Hamilton Haynes, Abraham Prison, Shashigaran Abishan, Bien Veno. Robert Tanujan, Rajikumar Sandan, Nirmala Kristiban, J. Anthony and N. Baviraj. Uh, it's the same 11 except for Bain Venu, I believe, who has come in. Um, it's going to be a real cracker of a game. We know the prowess of Hamid Al Hussein and playing in front of their home fans. Last time out at Sukhadasa Stadium, St. Patrick's did the impossible, beating Zahra College, going into a 3 0 lead in the first half. And somewhat uh, losing focus as Zahra came back to score three and through penalties, St. Patrick's came through. Uh, any favourites, uh, Ashwin, for this game? I quite fancy St. Patrick's to seal another, what would be another historic win in their football. With, uh, they've already beaten Zaira here and if they can beat Hamid Al Husseini, it will really be a big scalp to yeah, their name. I think their front three is the, uh, the, the threat uh, for Hamid. Yeah. If the front three start playing, as they did against Zaira, they're going to create a lot of havoc 
in the Hamidia box. As you mentioned, Irshad, one change for St. Patrick's. Samson sitting out and uh, Bien Venu coming in front in place of him. Samson has scored three goals, so just to give you an idea of the St. Patrick's bench strength, should they need any further firepower up front, they certainly have it among their ranks. St. Patrick's were in the same group as Maristella and they managed to over outscore Maristella from that group. Scoring 16, except for the three goals uh, which Kuman led in the Zahira game. He's been brilliant in goal. Just two goals in the group stages. He saved two crucial penalties in the shootout. Seems to be a look looks a bit glad when you look at him against the goal. And so does Safreen, who plays for Winon Sports Club. We have several DCL players in today's game, both teams. It will be Hamid Al Husseini to kick us off. And Aman Faiza straight away. Looking for the wing of Rishan. Hamid Al Husseini in a white strip today. Playing right to left of screen. Piece of work. Afka sending in that cross. Amidia did not have any other inside the box for Afka to target. As you see, St. Patrick, their customary three up front, not committing too many players. St. Patrick's very good on the counter. Front three all very fast players, which will work to their advantage if uh, Hamid Al Husseini have extended periods in their half as right from the get go. There's a player down for St. Patrick's. I think trying to manoeuvre that uh, through ball, he hit the turf. Jerking his knee in the process. Nirmala Kristipan seems to be having a head injury with the head uh, bandaged around. Probably a knock uh, in the training ground. And then looks okay to continue, doesn't go out to for any further treatment. And Pfizer trying to pick a pass, but it's cut out. St. Patrick's in possession now. Quickly recovered by Hamid Al Husseini. We've seen from midfield, the early balls have been sent out to Rishan on the left flank. Coach of the battery, Callister. A young coach in his first season with St. Patrick. As we have Hamidia. In control, these early stages. And there's Haynes. And he releases Sandan. Certainly not shy of shooting Sandan. He has five goals to his name. 
Good first effort. Always nice to have your first effort on target. It's a pretty comfortable save for Safrin, but still he made him work. Yeah, what what's good for St. Patrick is it's the same link up play which they had against Zaira. And they they have it's a tried and tested. And Santon and Hamilton Haynes combining once again. Safarin was uh, well behind that together. Maybe once again, St. Patrick's come through the middle. Skipper Dilakshan giving away position. Here's Vishan. It's a brilliant effort. Trying to curl it to the second post. Just missing it. I thought his first touch let him down there on that occasion, but he made the most of it, certainly. It turned out to be a very good effort. Just uh, cutting across and trying to chip it into the second post, but unfortunately goes off target and deadlock remains Brief hold up in play with BN Venu. Needs to come off the field before he can continue. Patrick not shying away wins a free kick and they're not pushing too many bodies at this moment up front just the four Sandan standing over it knocks it deep into a new territory too deep though as the ball Runs out for a goal kick. Pretty good crowd, Ashwin, for the second semi final. Yes, the crowd has built over the course of the day with uh, the home favourites playing in the evening. And there's a good number in the main stands to witness this second semi final. Most of the fans, it's safe to say, supporting Hamid Al Husseini. St. Patrick's hoping for an upset to try and dethrone the home favourites and deny them an opportunity to face St. Joseph's in the final. Referee has spotted some shoving and pushing. Sandan involved in the thick of it. Launched forward. Battle in midfield so far being won by Hamid Al Husseini. I'm sure Aman Pfizer's experience in that area will prove crucial for them. Chris Tepan wins the ball back. Just about picks out a teammate. Yeah, they have Dinesh Surain, Aman, 
and Sahan in the midfield. Three well experienced uh, players controlling this time around. Sahan giving away the ball to Stephen. Not able to get his cross. As Hamidia clears it away for a throw in. Felt they could have done better on that occasion. Zulfa. Delayed the clearance a bit and got into trouble. Lovely ball in. Safrin comes, uh, doesn't quite deal with it. Chris Deepen can't direct his header goalwards with the goalkeeper stranded. I think he tried to maneuver it to Sandan instead of going into goal with the header. Now here's Sandan once again. He's been tracked down by two defenders. Media seems to have done their homework. And they have two men marking Sandan. Good tempo shown when St. Patrick's are attacking, but they have a player down and looks like it's going to be an early change, a forced change. Bienvenu is going to be replaced by Robinson Reynold. Fight shown there by Heinz. Lights will probably come into play in the next fifteen to twenty minutes. As Chris Deepen on the ball for St. Patrick's. Well tackled by Suren. And uh, it's given away cheaply to Aman Pfizer. Goes for a long ball. But it's too close to the goalkeeper, Kuman. Once again, looking for Chris Deepen on the left wing. Sandan with a lovely ball releases Chris Deepen. We have Hamilton Haynes in the far post. The cross does come in, but too close to suffering. Nice Afka. Lovely footwork from Afka. Brilliant stuff from Hamid Al Hussein, his top goal scorer. Well, it's targeted towards Rishan, but will run out of play for a goal kick. Uh, Dinesh Surain was caught in two mind whether to take a shot or send it out to Rishan. And did neither. As once again, Hamilton Haynes puts it back to Dilakshan, the skipper. Patrick's trying to catch Amidia off guard with some quick passes, not coming through this time. Back down, Sahan. Right. Taking a shot, getting a deflection as uh, Hamidia gets a corner. First corner of the game then. Referee Taranga making sure the ball is inside the yard. Cleared away at the near post. Good defensive header. Midal Hussaini get the ball into the box again. 
Once again, competently dealt with by St. Patrick's, but they can't get the second ball away. Here's Rishan. Goes to Aman Pfizer. Can't pick out a pass. And St. Patrick's win the ball back. Played out to the left to Chris Steepen. Once again, St. Patrick struggling to clear their lines. Hamidi Al Husseini doing well to block and rushing. Trying to force an error from St. Patrick's. We see the crowd. Some of the dialogue Champions League games don't get as much crowd. It's good to see for schools football. The players will enjoy this. Playing in the big stage in front of a big crowd. As our media are trying to maneuver their way out of uh, in their own half. Miran Hussaini keeping possession of the ball rather well. But just as I say that they lose possession. An opportunity for St. Patrick's to get the cross in. Safrin came and missed it completely. But luckily for him, there was no one to follow that one up. Good cross by Heinz as here come Hamid Al Husseini on the other side. It's Pfizer. to thread a pass through but is well cut out by the St. Patrick's defence. This is a much open game compared to the first one we had. Both teams trying to attack and trying to play football. And it's been brilliant to watch this 15 minutes. And I'm sure the crowd present will appreciate the, the style of football these two teams are dishing out at the moment. And ball on that occasion against Deluxion. Free kick, Hamid Al Husseini. Mohammed Sahan standing over the ball. But Hamid Al Husseini have a player down on the edge of the box who's just being helped to his feet. Looks like he will go off for some treatment. Sahan ball into the box. It's a good ball. It's into a free a header. He should have uh, looked to control. He had no one around him. Not aware of it. Tried to head it first time. Was into a dangerous area from Sahan, but unfortunately for Hamid Al Husseini, nothing comes of it. Here goes Chris Stepan on his runs on the left flank. Manages to win the corner. A referee point to the goal kick. Very well defended by Mohamed Hassan. Just about getting a toe in. Lovely skill there. Get away from two men. That's Nadir. Plays it back for Rishan. Here's Hamilton Haynes. This is what he does well. Running at defenders. 
He's held the ball up well till St. Patrick's can get some bodies forward. Opportunity. Sandan just couldn't get it under control at the edge of the box. Oh, the pass mm. just eluding Hens. He has done well to hold on position until he gets support. As we once again have a slight delay. Abdul Basit, this time the player on the deck. It's like he's uh, suffered a strain or a pull of some sort. teams have been relatively evenly matched throughout this opening 20 minutes. Just a reminder about around the wickets, the comprehensive coverage of Sri Lanka's cricket from schools to club to national cricket. If you want to catch all the news and the latest, you can uh, follow program around the wickets on the papare.com as Hamid Al Husseini once again on the front foot St. Patrick's have uh, defended well Rishan still in possession dancing his way out of trouble but St. Patrick's concede the throw Looks like Rishan is feeling those knocks he picked up while near that corner flag he's gone down. Comes the second Hamid Al Husseini player to go down within a short period of time. I'm joined in the commentary box by Prashant Rajakrishna as uh, that throw. Just giving a minor worry to Kujuman, the St. Patrick's goalkeeper, who launches it forward in the direction of Heinz, who unfortunately can't keep it in for his team, and it'll be a throw for Hamid Al Husseini. Good evening, Ashwin. Seems to be in for a very good game of football today between the two big heavyweights in this tournament, Hamid Al Husseini and St. Patrick's. Would you be fancying anyone after 20 minutes? Still quite even, I would say. Neither team really taking the game by the scrap of its neck and dictating terms to the other. Both teams have looked good when they attack, but not particularly troubled when they have to defend either as Heinz has won his team a free kick. And also it looks like Hamidia has really done their homework very well in stopping the three-man attack for St. Patrick's. And on the other hand, St. Patrick's would have learned it's not always playing fast and furious football. If energy is being for full 90 minutes, we were really in for a big shock that quarter-final when Zaira came back with those three magnificent goals and to win in penalties. Seems 
seems to be a player down for St. Patrick's. I hope it's nothing too serious. Yes, this uh, opening 25 minutes has been full of players going down with various problems. St. Patrick's already forced into one change. And by the looks of it, they may have to make their second. Well, this is the Papere Football Championship 2018 and a magnificent setup for a lovely second semi-final between two heavyweights from Colombo and in Jaffna. And we also see a very good spectator turnout as well. St. Patrick's has to be really conservative in terms of their approach as to how they want to play. They want to be very one-dimensional speed and go and attack or try different tactics. Yes, because Hamid Al Husseini, like Zaira College, they've been around the block for a while. They know what it takes to win big tournaments and get into finals. So they definitely have the know-how and uh, just like we saw in the quarterfinal as you mentioned St. Patrick's may be a bit naive their football is good but they need to be a bit smart as a uh, shot nearly spilt by Safrin which would have allowed Chris Steepen simple tap in St. Patrick's once again in possession, but... Hamidia seems to be really marking the St. Patrick's forwards very well in numbers. As much as they go front in attack, in defense, they got every player that they need to stop that three-man force. And now here we see Hamidia coming on the right. That seems to be their favorite place. Ship the ball in and get something going there. Vishant's cross comfortably gathered by Kuman. I also like to see the set setup, the way that uh, the defense have been playing for Hamidia. It's with one sweeper. So he stands all alone in the back and he commands his players as to who should go and defend for whom. And that being said, thought it would be a very good ball to test the defense. Here they come again. Heinz. Heinz. Heinz is known for his nippy running and his fancy footwork. He loves to run with the ball into the box. And I'm not sure why players are really falling down for treatment one after the other. So that's the second time Rishan has gone down. The stoppages could only hurt them in terms of the momentum. Yes, Heinz cross into a dangerous area. Safrin was not sure whether to let it go or gather it. In the end, just about gets the ball under his control with Chris Deepan lurking. That's a poor goal kick and the ball comes back into the box for Hamidia to defend and it's a very bad clearance again. It's a semi-final match and these players need to be really up with their game with zero mistakes. Chris Steepen on that occasion fouling the Hamidia al Husseini <coughs> defender. Nowhere near the ball, takes him out and concedes a cheap free kick. We're 28 minutes into the game and still nil all between Hamidia, Lucenia and St. Patrick's. That's a looping ball for the St. Patrick's defender to clear. Well, Hamidia got lots of players with good experience playing for different levels of club competition in Colombo. 
And that being said, St. Patrick's players, I'm very sure they'll be playing for some of the Jaffna clubs as well. So it's all about experience and good temperament on a day like this. And Amin Al Husseini going to the lead. A great finish by Mohamed Afka. It was a well worked goal. St. Patrick defenders were just sleeping and ball watching. Somebody should have made a tackle there. Somebody should have made a challenge. They were just hoping the player would not cross it or find a, a teammate. But that being said, it's 1 0 now. And it's chasing time for St. Patrick's. Mohamed Afka coasting in. And it was a great cross by Aman Pfizer as well from the byline. No one marking him. St. Patrick's appeal that the ball went out of play. But play until the referee's whistle blows, they say. And Hamid Al Husseini failed to do that. And I beg your pardon, St. Patrick's failed to do that. And Hamid Al Husseini reaped the benefits. A goal for Mohamed Afka. And, and that being said, Afka has been cautioned for removing his jersey with that uh, goal scoring celebration. Hamidia with the upper hand now. They would just love to set the tempo of this game and continue playing throughout the match. That's what they really like to do. Love to see balls being crossed from deep to the wing players. It always gives them the opportunity to go one on one with the wing backs. For some reason, St. Patrick's does not look set today. He seems to be nervous. This will be a test to see, test of their character to see how they respond to going a goal down. They need to be patient. They need to believe that they still have the ability and indeed the time to get back into this game. Yeah, very true. And also, Saint, uh, Amidia should know the three strikers for St. Patrick's are capable of doing anything if the opportunity is given. And that being said, yeah, they come again from the left wing. St. Patrick's travelled all the way from Jaffna, playing almost every kind of situation that they need to be in this competition. They did not have an easy walk all the way to the semi-final. They were really tested in that quarter-final all the way to the penalties. Long so throw from Hamid Al Husseini. Aman Faiza. Cross. This time Kuman comes and Gets a hand to it. St. Patrick's need to stop those crosses coming from the right hand side. That seems to be the threat for them. It's always the crosses coming from that area for the defenders and the goalkeeper to work. Here's Sandan. Hines. Hines the free kick well. Rather than the foul, I would say the St. Patrick's player really read the situation well. He knew the defender is coming in for the challenge. It's good to get the free kick rather than trying to not go anywhere when you're surrounded by defenders all around. We've got a very decent crowd turn up for today, majority being Hamid Alou senior spectators. The free kick is in a very good position for St. Patrick's if a decent ball is being put into the penalty box for the three strikers to work on. They've just committed only four players. I beg your pardon, that's five. I would ex expect more numbers to be there, especially when they're a goal down. Tanujan's free kick flicked on by Sandan. Midal Husseini have not dealt with it fully. It's a great ball to try and release Left winger Rishan, but it's cut out. Here come 
Hamid Al Husseini again. Every 50 50 is hotly contested. Neither team wanting to give in and risk losing this midfield battle. Heinz is very much open in this uh, right hand side, and I believe he'll be charging for the ball. A very good looping ball for Heinz to work on. They need to use the three strikers as much as possible to triple with these Hamidia defenders. The referee coming in the way, helping uh, St. Patrick's. Well, it do happen in the game of football. You cannot predict anything. He is part of the game as well. Sure. Some people would have wanted the referee to keep a close eye on proceedings, just keeping too close an eye on that occasion. It comes to nothing as Hamid Al Husseini are in position once again. Here comes St. Patrick's. All over the top for Sandan. Doesn't quite get to him. Suffering. Tries to run a few seconds off the clock. I would like to see the St. Patrick's uh, strikers playing much higher the pitch with, in parallel to the defenders. Seems to be dropping a bit deep and giving the, Saint, uh, the Hamidia defenders to have a clear view as to where they are and where they could approach. That's Heinz playing very, very deep as a midfielder for St. Patrick's in that occasion. Hamidia, yeah, they come with a lovely move and I believe this is going to their right wing. And I'm very surprised the coach of St. Patrick's has not uh, picked this move from Hamidia when they get the ball, always feeding to the right wing player to go down the line to cross into the box. Safrin once again. Eating a few more seconds off the clock. This is all experience, even in this young age for the teenagers. Chris Deepen running at the defenders. Just can't pick out a pass though, but referee Taranga Pushpukumara has ruled that there was an infringement and a great opportunity from just outside the box for St. Patrick's. Can they conjure up something? That was a very good run by the player. He tried to take on three defenders and three of them had to come in to make a challenge to stop him. This is the threat that the St. Patrick's defenders bring into the game. It's a very good position for a free kick. We'd love to see if he can really get that ball up and down to the far post. Referee giving uh, instruction you're inside the penalty box and do not raise your hand. St. Patrick's players should be really up for this and also look for the second phase of the ball. Just over the bar from Sandan. You would have liked to have it on target ideally force the keeper into a save and create an opportunity for a rebound perhaps but on that occasion his effort going just over the crossbar and harmlessly out for a goal kick <clears throat> even though Hamidia is leading by one goal to zero still it's an open game nobody seems to be really dominating and controlling the tempo or the game it's just everyone to take for if they really play a good game of football. That's a very careless pass. 
And here goes the Amelia player, one on one with the defender. Could not keep it controlled to make something out of that. The St. Patrick's midfielder would be really, really happy. That miss did not cause anything. Chris Deepen. Picks out Sandan. Two defenders immediately coming towards the key player as perhaps almost too keen to get to him. And this is not the first time we have, we have seen the Hamidia boys just bringing the player down. They don't seem to be having an answer from this right wing when the St. Patrick's defenders triple the ball through. Mohamed the only solution is to bring them down. Mohamed Hassan, the guilty defender on that occasion. And an opportunity for Tanujan to put the ball into a dangerous area. It's positioned nicely for him. If he can whip the ball in between the defenders and the goalkeeper, could cause some problems for Hamid Al Husseini. Goes long, suffering comes, doesn't quite get rid of it. Good defensive tackle to prevent the second ball from coming into the box. Poor defending as uh, Hamid Al Husseini, it's an opportunity to break. But uh, St. Patrick's recover. And uh, here they come once again. We have a player down for Hamidia, but the players keep on playing. Nobody seems to be realizing that he is in need of some treatment. And now the ball comes out. The referee waving on treatment for the stricken player. Just under five minutes to go till half time. St. Patrick's got off to a decent start, but they haven't really troubled Safrin. Whereas uh, Hamid Al Husseini also haven't had many clear cut opportunities except for that one carved out by Aman Faiza, which was duly converted by Mohamed Afka, who has taken his goal tally in this tournament to five. There was a lot expected in this game to be very intense. But on reality, it does not seem the case. I guess players trying to be really cautious and not try to be too adventurous in their approach. Even though Hamidia is with a goal ahead, they do not want to commit too many bodies up ahead or try playing their fancy football in terms of passing and moving. It's just been one dimension. They get the ball, give it to the right wing, cross it in. Again, good recovery tackle from a Prism. Comedians give the ball back to St. Patrick's in good spirit. Something with the ball. And he finds his player just losing the footing at the important moment. Frustration building up with the St. Patrick's players here. That Heinz tried to triple and lost out, and he just had to pull the player down. They need to keep their cool rather than picking up unwanted yellow cards in this game. Hassan's free kick kicked on, but cleared away by St. Patrick's. Both teams have really struggled. I'm wondering whether it's something to do with the turf. Maybe it's a bit sluggish, but definitely not the same St. Patrick's. 
style of play we saw in the game against Zahira. That's a lovely testing ball. That's an unwanted rush from Shantan, I believe. I beg your pardon, that is Chris Stephen. The goalkeeper is in full control. He did not need to rush into. I'll be surprised to see if the referee doesn't go to his cards. Keeper also using the opportunity to eat away some time. The final minute of the first half. And we are about to find out how many minutes of added time we will have. It's a humid day and play seems to be really draining. It's a very good opportunity to get some water and refresh and regroup. Yes, if you are interested in purchasing any other photos published on the papare.com, you can purchase them by emailing sales at the and uh, make those memories your own. This play gets underway. And we are heading into five minutes of stoppage time in the first half. So still there is football to be played here. Not something you see every day, five minutes at the end of the first half, but it's been that sort of a game, stop-start in nature. A lot of fouls, a lot of injuries, which has really hampered play to develop for either side. And that's a very poor goal kick from the St. Patrick's keeper. When you know he has three lovely strikers, he should really try to find them. And that being said, he has a lovely ball fed into Heinz. Sorry, that. yeah, that's Heinz. Bit too eager to win the ball back, conceding a foul in the process. The St. Patrick strikers are really being frustrated, feeling a bit depressed. It's not happening the way that they want. And Hamidian defenders are really blocking them away with numbers. It's a rather dangerous shove from Mohamed Rishan. <laughs> Luckily, no major damage to the substitute, Robinson Reynold. Referee just having a word and saying, come on, lad, watch yourself. Referee is keeping the game cool and not reaching out to his cards. As long as he controls the players and the game, that's what you really want to see. Game of football, that's a lovely ball just to miss the... The opportunity, a slight contact, would have seen Hamidia going two ahead. Once again, it's players running into the six-yard box from deep that St. Patrick's really seem to be struggling to deal with. St. Patrick's have not been their self at all from what we saw in that uh, quarterfinal game against uh, Hamidia. The momentum, their gaming style, pattern, or even the passes, it's been very sluggish. Also, I think Hamid al Husseini have shown them a lot of respect. They understand the threat that they pose, and they have sacrificed some of their attacking game to negate that uh, Attacking threat of St. Patrick's. And here they come once again. Chris Stephen, Sandan. It's 
Sandern, lovely pass to pick out. Heinz gets past his man to the byline, crosses it in. Bit too deep, but Sandan will recover possession. Final shot. It's disappointing given the quality of the build up. More or less, it's like Hamidia knew exactly what St. Patrick's is going to do if they get the ball in the wings. And they're not committing any players, and they're just putting up numbers inside the box to defend. Hamidia seems to be really have done their homework very well and, in, and also the preparation for this game. Throwing for Hamidia. Surely must be the last phase or two of this first half. Looks like it's going to be launched into the box. It's a lovely long throw from the Hamidia player. This is where they miss a trick. St. Patrick's, he could have given that ball to the right wing, not again to the same side where the defenders are running back. And that being said, the ball is stolen. Referee is going for a goal kick there. I thought there was contact, but it did appear that he had lost possession of the ball and was rather looking for that and hoping that the defender would make some sort of contact. Possibly the slightest touch. Referee not fooled by that. As the action for the first half concludes. Hamid Al Husseini taking a slender one nil advantage into the second half as they look to try and join St. Joseph's in the final of the Papare Under 20 Schools Football Championship. It was a tight contest, not much between the two teams. St. Patrick's struggling to replicate their goal scoring form they have exhibited right throughout the tournament. Whereas Hamid Al Husseini also sacrificed a bit of their attacking play to try and defend well against the dreaded St. Patrick's front three. It was a moment of brilliance from Aman Pfizer and Mohamed Afka that helped Hamid Al Husseini into the lead as uh, the score at halftime rather deservedly reads Hamid Al Husseini 1, St. Patrick's nil. Lights in full action as we bring you the highlights of the first half. That wonderful goal by Mohamed Afka set up by Aman Pfizer and the celebration resulting in the forward picking up a booking as well. As you can see, it was very much a stop-start game with uh, a lot of fouls, which really hampered the build-up play of both teams, especially St. Patrick's as that occasion. But Afka missing a golden opportunity to double the Hamidian advantage on the brink of half-time. Do join us again in 15 or so minutes for live action of the second half. Till then, we'll go into a brief commercial break. Pandurpardun, Matinitamatunda Arambekun Labagate, Et Murlidan Gavis 
ప్రతి విశిష్ట పంపు ఏమి ఇది ఉంచ మైతా లాగా దేశ విసిగా దేవీ ఇన్ పస్సే మగే వాసన అవట మగే తన మగ తుంగరి ఒకటి కేతమ ఏ తరం సహభాగుని అదే మగే వాసన మగ తన మమ్ పందుడు పారద్ధినో లకును హారసీయ పమన కడ్లు పహక్క దీ తిబి మైతాన ఏ కత్ ఎక్కర హేతు మమ్ పందుడు పారదే ఇస్సల్ల మట మావన్ యామ్ దాక్ ప్రకాశకర అవు మట కూ హెమ తీసే గాండ బలంగిండ గాండ బలంగిండ పలేన్ లకును గెహు పంపి గుడక్ లాట వా సెటిల్ గైతు ఇలా మైతాన్ ఏ ఉపదేశం అంతా మైతా తుంగిని పందు మైతాన్ని మంగ లకును గుడక్ లా బాగా లాగిన ఏ పంద్ పందు దులహక్ పమన క్రీడాకరం మైత దివాహారే కావ ఏ దివాహారే ఆ మంగ క్రీడాకారే ఆ మైతాన్ని మావన్ మత మత అక్కడ ఏట అవుదు హయాగ్యాకు ఎక్క లకును అగ్గాట మమ్మ పందు తూనకి ఏ లకును గెహు అక్కువ మైతాన్ని ఏ సమగం ఇట పస్సే తే పాన్ ఏమైనా ఇట లకును పనహాక్ లా బాగా ఇట పస్సే మా హషాన్ విటి ఇన్ పస్సే హషాన్ మట ప్రకాశకర ఒబ్బ లకును పనహాక్ లా బాగా తీని మళ్ళీ మే గాల బలన్ రదునొత్తియట ఇది కిరణ మైతాన్ని మైతాన్ని అంతిం పన మాయత్తి కక్ వేగేం పహారో వెళ్ళ కదా అబ్బాయి మాకు వాసన టైం పహారక్ పిత్తే వేదున ప్రదేశ <laughs> ఏ దుష్కర కాలేగల పొడ్డాక్ మతక్కలు చాలా మొక్కదు అప్పుడు దాన్ని అదటాత్ పిట పలాత్వని బహు క్రీడకి కోలమెట్ అయినవా ఓన్ నోయకుత్ గట్లు అంటే మూన పాన ప్రశ్న అంటే మూన పాన సమరక్కడ ఒబ్బల మూన పాపు తరం అమారు నెత్తు అది ఒబ్బే మూల కాలేది మూన పాపు ప్రశ్న గట్లు దుఃఖం గట్లు గెల పొడ్డాక్ కథ అత్తరం అప్పటిది మూన గొడాక్ ప్రశ్న మంగితాన్ని ఏ కాలే శ్రీలంక ఖండామే నాయకే కియాన్ని క్రికెట్ ఇతర బలపు నాయకే కినేవే మంగితాన్ని క్రీడకేవంగే నవాతన్ పహసుకం క్యామ భీమ మీ హేమ దేక్మ బలాన్ని ఉన్నా ఏ ఏ కాలు హిటు నాయకే అంట మంగితాన్ని విశేషంగా ఏక అప్పి క్రీడక హరియట పిట బలాతులింగాపు మమ ప్రమోద ఎరిత్ ఉపశాంతద ఉపూల్ చందన మంగితాన్ని విశాల క్రీడక మురళీధరన్ మేహమ క్రీడక గత్తోత్ అప్పటి ఇంద నవాత అంత పిచ్చి తంగ్ క్రీడక నెవే ఏ కాలే ఇది మంగితాన్ని నాయకే అవట మెదిహత్తులా అపే పుహునుయం కటయుతూట పవా ఎన్న అప్పట వాహన యాక్ నెత్తాం ఏ ఏ ఏ ఏ పలాతిదలైన కౌరవ క్రీడకి ఎక్క అప్పట పూహనీయం కట్టుతున్న మంగితాన్ని లాస్తి గల దిన ఏకతమ్మా ఏ కాలే మన దెకపు హొందమ్మ దే మొకద మమ గాల్కిస్సు ఇన్న కాలే అరవింద్ అయ్య మా అత్తెక్కిన నెత్త రొషాన్ అయ్య మా అత్తెక్కిన మమ రాజగిరి ఇన్న రోయ్ డయస్ అయ్య రోయ్య మా వరంగనో ఏ వగే చరిత్ర సేనాయక మా వరంగ వెళ్ళి తీన ఉంటారు ఇది ఏ ఏ ఏ ఏ వగకి బారగాన్న ఏ విధిగా లాస్తి గల దిన క్యామ భీమా తిం బల్ల అప్పి అర్జున లే గెదర నవత్తల తివిల క్రీడకి ఉంట క్యాంప్ భీమ దీల త్యాగన బలాగన తీయన
වැඩි ඔලි බරපු යාල්පානතෙල් මාතර කොටවිල ගම්පියස රට ඇවිල්ලා තියෙනවා සිප්පදාස ඇඩ් මොරටුව පියගම මහින්ද රාජපක්ෂ ක්‍රීඩාංගන කිලක් මහන සුගදාස ඉන්ඩෝ ස්ටේඩියම් ඊස් ද ෆොක්ස් හිල් සුපර් ක්‍රොස් එවගේම ශාන අර්ජුන රණතුංග දවසක් ප්‍රකාශ කරනවා මේක කලින් මට මැච් විනස් ලා දාදනෙක් අවශ්‍ය නැහැ මට අශාන්තික රත්න වගේ තව ක්‍රීඩකින් දාදනෙක් ඉදියොත් මම ලෝකෙම ජය ගන්නවා කියලා මොකද මේ ඔබගේ තියෙන සුවිශේෂ විභාවය අර්ජුන නෑ මම හිතන්නේ අර්ජුන අපිට අර්ජුන අපිට දවල දුන්නත් පුදුම නිදහසක් ක්‍රීඩා කරන්න හැබැයි නිදහස අපි අයතුරු සහ පාවිච්චි කරේ නැහැ විශේෂයෙන් ක්‍රීඩා තරගයකට වහිනකොට අපි 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 පොසිටිව් අපි පුළුවන් තරම් අපි රට වෙනුවෙන් ක්‍රීඩා කරන තමයි අපි අපි එකොළොස් දෙනා ඉස්සරහා තාවේ. ඉතින් ඒක හින්දා අපි අර්ජුන අපි කියන විශාල විශ්වාසයක් තිබෙනවා. ඒ විශ්වාසය අපි කදාකත් කඩ කරේ නැහැ. ඒ අපිට දීලා තිබ්බ නිදහස අයතුරු පාවිච්චි කරේ නැහැ. ඉතින් ඒ කොන්ෆිඩන්ස් එකෙන් නැති අර්ජුන කියනවා ඇත්තේ. जनप्रियेषांग बैट्समैन Uh, nowadays we tend to see that uh, the spinners coming into uh, the equation in the first session of a test match as well before lunch uh, how do you see this uh, trend uh, developing leading into the future see the thing is that in the old days the groundsman prepared the wicket mm -hmm. and nobody else had a say in how the wicket was prepared even speaking for the tamil union mr k c rasay <laughs> Goal from Mohamed Afka, leading one goal to nil. 
as they hope to join St. Joseph's in the final of the Papare Under 20 Schools Football Championship. Prashant, your thoughts on the first half? Well, the first half uh, for me, of course, has just been sloppy football and Hamidia was just uh, gifted a goal. Players were expecting the ball is crossed the line, whereas it's not. So that was the only opportunity. Apart from that, there were no clear-cut chances from either side. They were just playing football without any clear idea. But I believe second half should be completely changed and I'm hoping and looking forward for a St. Patrick's Fast and Furious game which we saw at the quarter-final. Yes, St. Patrick's may be down for the moment but as we saw in the previous semi-final where St. Joseph's came back from a goal down to beat Maristella two goals to one. In the 89th minute the winning goal coming courtesy of Chalna Pramantha. This game too is not over till the 90 minutes are up and St. Patrick's if they keep going at it and if they can defend well enough to keep the deficit as it is I'm sure they will be able to find a way past Hamid Al Husseini given the quality of their front three. And also the St. Patrick's and Hamidia should really take this more seriously for the next balance 45 minutes. Loss of concentration here or there, they could completely lose the game. It's a completely a new half to play. So I think the next goal will be possibly the deciding goal. If St. Patrick's can equalize, then uh, it will be a real morale boost for them which may spark them into life. Whereas if Hamid al Husseini back, the next goal could really be a sucker punch to the team from Jaffna, who have played so well throughout this tournament to get to this stage. Looking back at all the games, we know for, where, for sure this, both these sides have the experience and the talent to play some real good football. I believe we are a bit late on time and referee is trying to rush things. It's 15 minutes from whistle to whistle is the break. Yes, the break was rather compounded by a very long time in the dressing room for Hamid Al Husseini. He came quite late onto the grounds, but they're all set to get underway once again St. Patrick's to get things started playing from right to left of screen in their traditional yellow strip here we go with the second half St. Patrick's need two goals to Pip Hamid Al Husseini as uh, they start off very brightly pressing forward uh, St. Patrick's just the final cross, not quite up to the standard of the build-up play. Babiraj, the guilty party on that occasion. Well, this is what we've been uh, seeing from St. Patrick's throughout the previous game. And I think they have come to life in the in this second half. Scrappy once again to start with in midfield. St. Patrick's in possession now. St. Patrick's trying to keep the ball and play the passing game. Well, I really enjoyed looking at that first move right from the restart. With Heinz on the right hand corner. <coughs> St. Patrick's heavily relying on Heinz, Santan, and Chris Reepen. I would like to see a surprise package from the midfield joining those three, trying to add something new to their game. They also have the option of uh, bringing on Samson from the bench, who has scored three goals in the competition as a uh, Cross into the box. Uh, opportunity to get a shot away. Blocked. 
St. Patrick still in possession as uh, Hamid al Husseini have a lot of men behind as uh, it's put into a dangerous area. Chris Deepan can't make contact. And the final effort over the bar. That's a very good build-up play. Continuous momentum playing very well. St. Patrick seems to be have really gathered themselves together in that half-time break. It will be interesting to see what's the response from Hamidia for the St. Patrick's uh, charge. Referee playing advantage there for a ball. Are we going to see another great comeback? Ashwin? Well, I'd like to see another goal, preferably from St. Patrick's just to up the ante a bit, force Hamid al Husseini also into more attacking football. Yeah. It is, it's still a very good watch for the neutral. The St. Patrick's forwards should realize they've been really marked in that first half by the Hamidia defenders. So should try to reduce the fancy footwork and try to just pass the ball and move. This movement of the ball hasn't been particularly great today from the front three. Great opportunity. St. Patrick's just can't get the cross in. It was not for the lack of an opportunity. Deciding to run it slightly more than he should have. It's the final third or the last phase of the build-up play. They're really lacking or just running out of ideas. That effort also a tame one. Comfortable for suffering. Midal Husseini, decent build up. Afka sets it for Man Pfizer. This is their deadly combination. Man Pfizer once again with an opportunity to cross. It's time cut out before it reaches the six yard box corner for Hamid Al Husseini. First corner of the second half. And it's a very good response from Hamidia coming charging out. Not letting things to be dominant by St. Patrick's. They do not want to stay back at defend. They just want to go for that second goal. That's a lovely ball into the six-yard box, but uh, St. Patrick's are in numbers in defending. Well defended by St. Patrick's, winning the goal kick. Referee just controlling the play, saying do not go arguing with the assistant referee. It looked for a far fair challenge there. The player just using the shoulder. Mohamed Sahan, not quite in agreement with the referee's decision. St. Patrick's still in possession. But it's just that once it reaches the final third, they run out of ideas. So it's been a real problem for them in this game. 
Chris Tipan wins the ball back. Once again, unable to pick out a forward. Sandhan back heel. Chris Tipan. Not much in terms of support, but does well to get some sort of contact from Mohamed Hassan and win a free kick. The best possible result for St. Patrick's in that situation. As he was really isolated and headed nowhere really. It's a very dangerous position and would like to see a wonderful free kick for the strikers and for the defenders' money. St. Patrick's got a couple of uh, free kicks in the similar area in the first half. Only to waste. And just before this free kick is taken, Hamid al Husseini will make their first change of the game. It's Mohamed Hussein who's going to be replaced with Mohamed Safran. I believe this is a tactical move. It's a good ball into the far post. It's, it's fallen after a mile, still alive after a mighty scramble, cleared away by Hamid al Husseini. Well, frantic moments there in the six yard box, but Hamid al Husseini has survived by the skin of their teeth. That was a chance. That was a chance for a goal. And St. Patrick's, they should ask themselves how they did not score there. It was an almighty melee inside the box with bodies flying all over the place. But the final shot never really looked comfortable for the player. And Midal Husseini ultimately able to get the danger clear. This has been the bad side of the uh, semi second semi final. Players being getting injured far too many times. Not sure whether it's a tactical ploy the Hamidia players are using. They should understand for every stoppage the referee will add time. It could really come and haunt them if their game goes into a very tight stage. But to be fair, St. Patrick's have played a very physical game. And They've not had it easy. The 50-50s have been punishing. But still, the injuries, as you say, have affected the flow of the game. See, that could play both ways. Even Hamidia could lose the momentum and St. Patrick could gain. It's a very lovely shot. And referee calling back for a foul. He played advantage or try, wait and see. But did not see a clear advantage, so he's just bringing the ball back to a free kick there. Oh, I beg your pardon, he's just calling the player to warn. This uh, reasonable decision from the referee as Chris Tipan here has some space finally to run into. He's put it too close to the defender though. He's done well to get it clear. <clears throat> it's good to see St. Patrick's using both wings equally. Offside this time called against uh, St. Patrick's player. Rather careless, he should have noticed that he was the last man given his position on the pitch. Here comes St. Patrick's once again. Crowd has been quietened in this second half thanks to a resurgent looking start from St. Patrick's. They've Certainly created a few more problems than they did in the first half. 
the game has not been what everybody came today expecting a thrilling encounter to be. And also the speed has been not that much. St. Patrick's trying to work their way out to go get that equalizer. Zaman Faiza, key for Hamid al Husseini as his ball over the top. Just the about gathered by Kuman. In that quarterfinal, we saw this keeper charging almost for every ball. He was brave enough to come. But today, he seems to be in two minds. That's a difference that we noticed today, Ashwin. Just perhaps slightly wary about long range effort. But he's been very much uh, in his six yard box today. As uh, here comes St. Patrick's great run from Sand. And this is what St. Patrick players are capable of. Their ball running has been always good. They seem to be controlling the ball very well. It's a heavy clash with the defender into some uncomfort. And the player is requesting treatment yet again. Yes, I think the Hamid al Husseini, the St. Patrick's players are taking that issue up with the referee as uh, just a reminder about the Podi Papare. All junior sporting events are covered by uh, the Podi Papare platform for sporting youngsters. If you have any events, you can email the details to info at thepapare.com. Once again, another break in play as a Hamid al Husseini player receives treatment. It's Abdul Basit. Goal kick to Amid al Husseini as yes, the referee indicating that he is not buying this time wasting business. Uh, this time will be added on at the end of the second half. Well, today's referee is a very highly experienced referee. Taranga Pushpakumara is not going to just buy into this tactic from Hamidia. If it is one. Long ball launched over the top. Clear opportunity. But his first touch is heavy. Holds it up till support arrives. And the St. Patrick's defenders get it off him at the expense of a corner. It was uh, Aman Pfizer this time who ran into the box with the ball. St. Patrick's place looks very flat footed there. They were attacking, and as soon as the ball is lost, nobody's making any attempt to return back. Corner cleared away by St. Patrick's. Man Pfizer in pursuit. St. Patrick's switch sides. But defender can't quite keep it in. It's run out for a throw. I'm not sure Santan had that in mind to cross the ball right to his right wing. Would have wanted to get the ball to his right wing there. To Heinz. Long throw coming up. Courtesy of Abdul Basit. Hold into the box. Goes all the way to Cuban. Lovely touch. 
He's created himself a bit of space. As uh, Sandan just can't get it under control. And once again, Hamid Al Husseini preventing St. Patrick's from getting forward. Here's uh, Chris Deepan, chance to cross. Ball in is too long though. And St. Patrick's are l left frustrated once again. Some of the other St. Patrick's players should try to play football here rather than just always looking for the three forwards. The midfielders should try to take the ball and go into the box. It could be their day today. Sound and very heavily marked. So here's an opportunity from a corner kick. I would like to see the likes of Baviraj from uh, St. Patrick's get involved more, push himself more, get himself into the penalty box and be support to the strikers and also be a nuisance to the defenders. This time we have a player from St. Patrick's down. But Looks like he'll be he's okay to continue and no real major break in play. What can St. Patrick's produce from this corner kick? They really need a goal. It's uh, into a dangerous area. But headed over the bar. From close range, suffering on that occasion. Possibly should have dealt with that one better. That was a very good uh, corner kick. The ball put it to a dangerous area. St. Patrick showing some urgency here. Referee coming in the way again. Here's Aman Pfizer. Lovely pass. Aman Pfizer, opportunity to shoot. Sets it up for his teammate and just passed the outstretched boot of Mohamed Afka, I believe. Set up brilliantly was by Mohamed Rishan. It was a lovely play. Only the ball had too much in the asking from his teammate to get that. All important touch. Here comes St. Patrick's. It's again, it's a very crowded midfield. Amidal Husseini pulling everyone back to deal with the threat of St. Patrick's attack. It's a very big pitch and they should try to use every bit of it. They could, they could really stretch the Hamidia defence St. Patrick's with their movement. Defender hoping his keeper would come Eventually came a bit late, but to good effect, preventing the Hamidian forward from breaking through on goal. Crap in midfield. Amir Al Husseini come away with the ball. Aman Pfizer. Aman Pfizer, chance to take a shot. And eventually fires over the bar. He wanted to go for glory, but too bad for him. He couldn't keep it down. 
can't blame the young lad at a situation like this at the semi-final. Why wouldn't you go, want to go for glory? That's a very good move and here they come again. Referee not buying that this time. This went to ground rather theatrically and has stayed on the ground. But he'll slowly pick himself up. That's a very lovely ball. Chipped into the box. Safrin unsure whether to come or stay and nearly cost his team. Game opening up slightly as St. Patrick's push further forward. Leaving Hamid al Husseini space to get in behind them. Hamidia seems to be learning from the opportunity that is given by St. Patrick's by them pushing everybody up to get that all-important equaliser. If only Hamidia can keep that ball and play more dynamically. Another player seems to be struggling with some cramps. Yes, uh, I'd expect there to be a very healthy chunk of at a time at the end of the second half. This time it's Mohamed Sahan who's on the deck receiving treatment. Referee wants him to get off the pitch and he's calling for the stretcher. I think he may make a miraculous recovery as soon as he is taken off the pitch. That's what we always see in the modern day football. But I'm very surprised young boys these days with cramps, especially at a semi final game, they should be really fit and up for the challenge. So I think, if at all, if I'm to play devil's advocate, uh, it may be because they are not used to playing on the pitches of this size, not your average school football ground as uh, human comes and gathers balls it out here's an opportunity for St. Patrick's if they can get their passes right picked out but here they come once again they have a man advantage and they should try to use that too Lovely football from Hamidia. The pass and move. That's their signature football style. Oh, cutting the ball back. Not to find uh, support. Here come St. Patrick's at the other end. It's end to end stuff, and that's a very poor ball by the midfielder. Into the last 20 minutes now. Stuart die for St. Patrick's. They need a goal to stay in this game. Will they be able to find it? It's given away, but dealt with eventually by the covering defender. Mohamed Rishan making a nuisance of himself, pressuring the St. Patrick's defense. Lucky for St. Patrick's, Thanujan read that situation very well and defended it. And 
we see another Hamidia player down with cramps. This is going to be a problem for Hamidia if players are going to be cramping and walking out or stretched out. St. Patrick players are really putting the pressure on the referee, and referee is really up for it with a good, clear warning, saying yeah. he controls the time, and he is the referee, and you play. Yes, I thought the player looked a bit intimidated by the referee's reaction. Uh, this will help expedite the process of players receiving treatment as Hamid al Husseini are making a change. That's number 12, Safran, coming in for the injured player who just went out in stretcher. Man Pfizer. Here's Safran, first chance to make an impression. Cross his team. Cleared away by St. Patrick's only as far as Aman Pfizer. All the way to Mohamed Rishan. That cross comfortably gathered by Kuman. And uh, Safrin came very unconvincingly. Barely dealt with it as he's lucky. The ball fell to a Hamidian player as now the goalkeeper has gone down. That's a player they won't be able to stretch it off. That's for sure. He needs to be treated and you cannot play without a goalkeeper. So even again. in that move, you see only just one St. Patrick's player. The midfielders are giving the ball and just ball watching after that. They should go and support. If there was a St. Patrick midfielder following up, he could have been at the end of that ball. These are the things that they should do. These are basic, simple football. The coach need to really push these boys up. It's not about having players behind and containing. Let's go get that equalizer. Because time is running out as well. They are nearing the last 15 minutes of the game. And St. Patrick's are still behind. Still in need of a goal to keep their hopes alive. And... Goalkeeper is uh, down as it's unclear whether they will substitute him or not. Uh, I highly doubt it. He's, he's back on his feet. Contact seemed to be minimum. Maybe he's feeling some discomfort with that clash but for Hamida he's back in his feet and that could be good news that could be good news St. Patrick defenders playing dangerously trying to play their way out and the ball is given and here comes Hamida it's one on one just not finding the last bit of it if it had a proper finish to it they could be 2 1 up. Mohamed Rishan there did all the hard work, but just the finish. Couldn't quite get it on target. Great opportunity for Hamidia to put this game to bed, and will they regret not making the most of these opportunities? Still another 14 minutes to play. They have a corner kick now with which to try and increase their advantage, perhaps decisively. It's a 
another corner to Hamidia. The last corner we saw was a very good ball for the goalkeeper and the defenders to work. Should have more men in that six yard. This one's a flat corner, but just unable to make the vital contact. The substitute Safran there as here's Chris Tepen. Some space. Tries to pick out his wingers, but well read and intercepted by the Hamidian centre back as he has uh, an opportunity. This time you to go straight to the keeper. It's end to end stuff now as we reach close to the la final stages of the game. It's still 13 minutes more. St. Patrick's look like they could produce a goal if they continue to play with that level of urgency and sharpness that they have shown the last five or ten minutes. They come once again. Sandan. It's a poor, poor pass. He had men free as well as there's an opportunity for Hamid Al Hussein. It's two on one, but forward lost his footing. Mohamed Rishan, perhaps fatigue creeping in to his play. Here's Aman Pfizer. Can't pick out a teammate. That's a chance gone begging for Hamidia. They are two against one. The foul now, this time on the Hamidian winger. One should say the referee has really controlled the game well, keeping the cards to his pocket. Opportunity to get the ball into the box. Sandan standing over it. What can St. Patrick's top scorer do with this? It's uh, launched into the box, cleared away. And uh, thought about shooting first time. Tries to pick out Chris Tepen. Unable to do so. Our media get it clear. St. Patrick's are uh, relying heavily on individual players to deliver and go and get that goal. There's an opportunity, but the cross-in didn't really have much power. Could have taken a looping header to beat the keeper, which Sandan couldn't quite produce, unfortunately, for his team. And he entered the final 10 minutes, as it were, at halftime. Hamid al Husseini won, St. Patrick's nil. It's been a cagey affair. But uh, it's been growing more and more open as this half has progressed. It's time clear foul on the Hamidian player for substitute Sarfan who's been brought down One Pfizer stands over the Hamidian free kick. Can he create another goal for his team to seal their place in the final? Long ball over the top, nearly fell kindly for the forward. But uh, St. Patrick's get it clear only as far as Mohamed Sahan.
St. Patrick's in possession. Lovely idea. Player through on goal, but uh, Shepard are out of off the ball well by the Hamidian defender. But that's the sort of movement that St. Patrick's have lacked throughout this game. Is it too little, too late, or can they pick out an equaliser in these dying embers of the game? Aman Pfizer. Lovely ball into the middle. The header just about tipped over the bar by Cuban, who's kept his team in it. What a lovely save by the goalkeeper. Was stretched to keep that away. He did not want to take any chance. Like the Liverpool derby game. He was wanting to clear it out. Mohamed Rishan with that cross. But brilliantly tipped over the bar to deny Sarfan. Goalkeeper probably should have come for that one, but uh, he's lucky that his defenders dealt with it. It's coming in again. Cuman spilled it, but gathers it at the second attempt. He was very lucky there with that Hamidia striker right near him. He just wobbled it, but yet at his second attempt, managed to grab it on clearly. St. Patrick's need to take this ball to the other side of play. And they ain't going to do that by Kehala's mispasses. And also they need to push players up now. There's no time for caution now. Just over five minutes left on the clock as St. Patrick's are forced to start from the back once again. Chris Deepen, lovely release, opportunity for him to get across in. It's gone across the face of goal, but last ditch intervention keeps the St. Patrick's forward from getting to it. Here's Aman Faiza, brilliant touch. It's three on two, still going. Unable to make use of the advantage as uh, suddenly the game has grown wide open. Chance in the middle and shot straight at the keeper. Unbelievable passage of play. The St. Patrick's defenders completely switched off as they thought Mohamed Rishan would put the ball out to touch, given that his teammate was on the floor. But he crossed the ball in, and Aman Faiza could only fire straight at Cuman, who gathered quite gleefully. What a chance that was. Even if he had cut the ball back in, there was a Hamidia player all alone to just to tap in. For St. Patrick's, all the hard work is done on the wing, but nobody seems to be there in the all-important six-yard box for the important finish. That has been their lack of concentration today in the gameplay. One should always ask, where are their strikers? Why are they not in the six-yard box? They can do all the ball running, ball play, but you need to have someone in that all-important dangerous area. You have seen a couple of crosses just going and no one to tap in. Only a matter of minutes now for the Hamidians. St. Patrick's have really struggled to find their attacking flow, but they've shown glimpses of it in these last 10 minutes. Aman Faiza has been immense 
for Hamid Al Husseini. As he tries to run down the clock near the corner flag. Wins a throw in. Hamidi have had a couple of chances in the last few minutes and they have not capitalized on that. They should hope that it will not come and haunt if St. Patrick's to go and get a goal right now. <clears throat> Another long throw. Epic calls foul throw there. Lifted his foot off the ground. St. Patrick's more importantly on the ball now. Not for long after that poor, poor touch. So Lovely ball over the top, but Kuman once again alert. I still can't understand why St. Patrick's coach has not tried something new. Something different, throw in a substitute, add a different dimension to the game. Yes, he has players on the bench, but has opted not to use them. Maybe they are carrying an injury. But... If I'm not mistaken, I just saw referee Taranga Pushpa Kumara signal seven minutes to be added on at the end of the second half. So I'm not sure the keeper really wanted that touch. They kept it in play though. Here's Chris Steepen. Still going. And still. Loses the ball. The St. Patrick's forwards should be really understanding the game right now that they cannot triple their way through. Whereas Hamidian defenders are really blocking them. They should try to go for plan B or di different option. Recalling foul there. The opportunities are coming for St. Patrick's. It's just the conversion that has not been there today. And it's six minutes of stoppage time. Flicked on. Cleared away. From inside the Armenian six yard box. St. Patrick's just he can't seem to get a hold of the ball. Hamidia have nearly everyone back defending. So it's a tough proposition for a team that relies on dribbling and pace. They need something like maybe an opportunity from a corner kick, which they have now. And in the first minutes, five out, five. On the first half, five minutes plus second half, six minutes, 11 minutes of stoppage time for a semi final. <laughs> That's really huge. I was about to comment on that as well, Prashant. Uh, suddenly, uh, the most amount of stoppage time I've seen as that flicked header comfortably gathered by Safrin. He sets his player on the, on the break. Tries to pick out his teammate. Cuman has come, but he was offside. Safran. The guilty player, St. Patrick's, try to work it fast, work it too fast in the end. And a uh, couple of sloppy passes later, it's uh, Hamid Al Husseini throw. The referee saying, please do not waste time, I will add more. Hamid, you're trying to plow uh, one player to take all the throws. Man Pfizer once again. 
This is not what St. Patrick's wants. St. Patrick's won. They are the forward and their midfield players keeping the ball and playing. And here comes Amidia. Foul given St. Patrick's way. We want to take this quickly and get on with it. <laughs> Given away cheaply once again. Lack of leadership from St. Patrick today. Nobody seems to be really commanding or controlling the team today. When you want to put the ball up ahead, not sure why he wanted to give the ball to the right back. Excellent point, Prashant. I was also wondering why he went for that horizontal pass. It's a, it's a long run down the wing, which is uh, cut out by the Hamidian defender. Media are back in possession now. We're halfway through the added time. Lovely ball over the top, but once again offside. <coughs> St. Patrick should push everyone into the box now. That's what we see in modern day football in any level of game. Opportunity to get a shot off. It's blocked. And, uh, still, danger is not cleared as uh, players are attempting all manner of clearances and shots. Ultimately, foul in favor of. Hamid Al Husseini as they may just grow one step closer to seeing out the remaining two minutes of added time. That would have been a side of relief for Hamidia, that free kick going in favour of them. Chip ball over the top. Opportunity. Completely fluffed his line, Sarfan. St. Patrick's given another lifeline. Are we going to see a goal at the last final minute? To add more drama to this game? You'll see an injury, that's for sure. As Midal Hussein, you have a player down once again. This time, he's able to continue without any treatment. After Goldwards, Chris Stephen cleared away by Hamidians. Just hasn't happened for St. Patrick's today. They've shown glimpses of the threat that they pose, but nothing for a prolonged period of time. As here comes Chris Stephen. Can he pick out a pass? Unable to do so. Hamidia get it clear. And the referee blows for full time. Hamid Al Husseini beats St. Patrick's College Chafna. One goal to nil to seal progression to the final of the Papare Under-20 Football Championship 2018. It was an even encounter with one moment of brilliance from Aman Pfizer and Mohamed Afka separating the two teams. Ultimately, that first half goal scored by Afka enough to seal the win for Hamid Al Husseini. St. Patrick's College just couldn't find their groove throughout the 90 minutes. They showed glimpses of the quality they have, but 
unfortunately oh, were not able to reproduce the type of scintillating performances that saw them end up one of the highest goal scoring teams in the tournament. Great show of sportsmanship from the Hamid Al Husseini team as they usher the St. Patrick's players through a tunnel. Yes, everybody is appreciating what St. Patrick's have brought in for this tournament. They were never in the cards, but they come all the way to the semi final, beating some top teams. Well, now it's all Hamidia to enjoy this wonderful performance they put in today. Deserved winners. Yes, there's confirmation of the final score. One goal to nil. And confirmation that Hamid Al Husseini will face St. Joseph's in the final. Here's the highlights and that's the key moment of the game. Aman Faiza setting up Mohamed Afka for the only goal of the game. There's, uh, for most of the game, there were a lot of fouls, a lot of hard tackles and 11 minutes of added time in total across the two halves. As uh, both teams had opportunities, Hamid Al Husseini in particular maybe would have felt that they could have and should have scored more goals. Some great opportunities carved out for by their captain Aman Faiza. As uh, unfortunately though, when it mattered the most, they just couldn't find the goal that mattered to seal the deal but they held on eventually and are now in the final of the Papare under 20 football championship 2018 it's been a pleasure bringing you live coverage of the semi-finals from the Sugaldasa stadium just a reminder that the final of the tournament to be played between St. Joseph's and Hamid Al Husseini, Colombo. Two teams from Colombo will be held this Sunday. And you can catch live and exclusive coverage of this on the papare.com. That's it for me and Prashant in the commentary box. Thank you.